So I'm Kimberly Felder. I am the specialist and the owner of Clarity Hearing. It's something that happens so gradually. The, the rustling of our clothes, our footsteps, the leaves into the fall. There's a lot of things that we don't hear on a day-to-day -day basis because we forget that they make noise. Um, I'm going to give you a quick run and down on to, if I can get this incorrect. Um, there we go. Okay, so I want to show you a hearing test. So across the top here, this is our frequency ranges. So when we look at this chart, we look at the low tones that is over here on this side of the chart. Low tones are bassy, men's voices, low tone, like an R. We can make that louder. Ruh, ruh. It's a volume all over here on this side. This side over here is women, young children, grandchildren. All of this onto this side of the chart is clarity. So when you look at a hearing test, you have half of it that is volume and half that is clarity. So for instance, in the clarity range, like a TH, you can say that sound, but we cannot make that sound louder. So we have volume versus clarity. That would be like when you are watching TV. You can turn the volume up, but you can't make it clearer because volume and clarity is two different things. We need to be able to understand what we're hearing. And if we turn the volume up, it actually distorts sound. So bottom of the chart is profound after the hearing is, is gone. So when you have these little marks on your audiogram, that's what this is called. When you have these little marks onto the audiogram, these are the lowest levels you're able to hear at, at each one of these frequencies, which plots out your prescription that goes in your hearing aids. So anything above these lines to the top line is what this person misses into their hearing. So my job would be able to take those lines and push them up above so that you can hear clearly through the speech spectrum. So that's our hearing. Um, main thing, a lot of people kind of focus on this. This is to let you know what you lose as far as your low tones and your high tones goes. But onto the bottom of the chart is the most important um, numbers. So onto the bottom of the chart, the, one of the last tests that we give you when we give you a hearing test is a word recognition. It's discrimination. How well do you understand and process the speech? And knowing that, that's how you know how well you're going to hear with hearing aids. So everybody thinks I'm going to put a hearing aid on, I'm going to hear 100%. It does not work that way. So the hearing aid can only work off of what you have to work with. So if we've done your test, and at the end of the test, we give you these words that say the word cat, say the word hat. We're giving you a phonetically balanced list of words that actually has no association from one to the next to actually find out how well you actually understand when speech is there present. So that number can be very low, it can be high. So at the end of the test, let's say for instance that you come in at an 82%. So 82% means that you're hearing, you're understanding, but you're not understanding everything. The brain has already begun to forget how to hear. 18% of speech. So that's what that means. So 18% of that speech, you're not going to hear again. Um, the brain recognizes the speech when it hears it, it needs to be able to process it. So um, the processing that score onto the bottom is one of the biggest scores onto the test for you to understand how well you would understand with hearing aids. A lot of people do not understand that part of it. I'm gonna give you an example that I had about two and a half years ago. And as long as I've been doing this, I have never had to come across anybody that I had actually have to turn away. Gentleman was, um, he was 63 at the time. He was beat at, at 17 years old. Four boys jumped him and kicked him in the head. He lost his hearing. Throughout his life, he could not afford to 
buy a hearing aid. So he ended up wearing amplifiers his whole life. Well, at 63, he was able to afford hearing aids and he come to me and he asked me um, to fit him with hearing aids. Once I gave him his hearing test, I literally had to tell him he will never hear speech again. He'll never hear a syllable. He has waited so long, his brain had literally forgotten all comprehension when it comes to speech. He will never hear um, words again. So that was, that was about two and a half years ago. It was quite um, an eye opener. Um, so if we use our hearing every day, we maintain it. We don't lose our ability to lose the speech understanding. And another thing that I want to tell you is, um, okay, so that's the hearing test itself in a nutshell. That will let us know what type of hearing aid you need to wear, because um, it depends. Uh, your hearing loss does not, um, if it you can't wear something in the ear, the hearing test will let us know, the professionals, that um, you will not hear well into that hearing aid. So it's usually over the ear or in the ears. We have come out with uh, rechargeables. So now we have rechargeables that go into the ear um, that are Bluetooth compatible. Um, hearing aids are onto a big scale now compared to what they used to be. So this is a chart that, let's see if I can get this in here. No, sorry guys. There we go. It seems to let me get in every, every once in a while. Once I get my face in there, it lets me come up closer. So I want you to take a look at this. This rows, each one of these rows is a hearing aid, okay? So um, there we go. So each one of these rows is a hearing aid. We have low bottom of the barrel, we have cream of the crop up here. What I want you to know is that hearing aids, all hearing aids, whatever the hearing aid may look like, you can have five different pricings in those hearing aids. So what that means is with five different levels, we have the two on the bottom that are not going to help as much in background noise. We have good, better, and best when it comes to background noise. So when you are out there and you're shopping for a hearing aid, make sure that you know where in this scale you're at, okay? Because um, prices do change. Prices are not regulated in our industry. So I can, there's a place that might have hearing aids all the way up here for 14,000. There might be somebody that's all the way up here that's only 5,000. So you must shop. Do not take the first price that comes at you and know that you have different choices. So if you're somebody that is not out a lot, um, maybe go to a doctor's office every once in a while, um, socially, maybe some small groups, you're gonna to wanna to be right in the middle of the chart. Not so much all the way at the top, but in the middle of the chart. Um, these two here seems to be the best sellers out onto the market. These onto the bottom are going to be somebody that is really not um, getting out into the situ at any situations. So that would be in a lower level. Um, also, so we have a lot of different levels when it comes to technology. The technology is going to help you when you're in background noise or not. Um, so the technology themselves, it depends on what your lifestyle is. Everybody's an individual and go in with the thought that you have questions, you don't know what level you're looking at, um, ask questions. Um, let me see what else. Um, can I get any questions from anybody? More John? Questions. Okay, John. Are you John? I'm Bob. <laughs> You're Bob. Okay, because Bob, okay. you don't have a name. <laughs> you have an iPhone. <laughs> okay. I'm Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Um, does the brain have any ability to recover having been absent of hearing to... When Great. you do provide hearing that it can rebuild any at all? So it, it, it can. Um, it's more of, um, are you, 
um, are you young enough for that to happen? Okay. So we lose it very fast when it starts happening, but bringing it back is something that takes a very, very long time. I will tell you when you wear hearing aids though, one of the, one of the main things that you need to realize is that you haven't been hearing in so long, even if you had an 85% ability to understand, you wouldn't know that by wearing a hearing aid. Okay. Them are numbers that we watch for you. So I always disclose that information to you, but building when you put a hearing aid in your ears and you start listening, you're going to feel like you literally hear everything 100%, but you really don't. The brain is getting stimulated onto things that has not been stimulated for a very, very long time. So the concept when you first put hearing aids in your ears is that, that I hear a hundred percent. I don't want anything changed. Everything sounds good. Um, so it, it can, so it can, it can rebuild what it's lost. It can in time, but we have to, so we lose it over time. It comes back over time, but it takes many years for that to happen. Very good question I mean, though. I may not have enough years left. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is, is being able to understand what you can understand today. Mm -hmm. And getting because of once you start understanding and wearing hearing aids, the gaps get filled in automatically for you, um, just like today. And like I tell anybody that wears hearing aids, whatever you do, do not stop using anything that helps you to hear better. So if you're one that watches closed caption, keep that even after you've worn hearing aids, you will get rid of your habits that you use to help yourself hear better over time. So the whole object is to get you to hear clearly. And if we need clues, body language, things like that, that helps us to understand what's going on in the world. It really does. Um, I'll go ahead, Herb. I believe you had a question. Unmute yourself, Herb. Are we there? Yep. Okay. I don't wear them all the time, uh, particularly outside because of the oxygen cord. And um, in fact, it, it, uh, it knocked one off and I lost it and had to replace it. But my problem seems to be particularly with my wife. I know it's inbred of uh, understanding her, okay? Uh, yeah. And, and I just wonder, I mean, I, I can, I'll be watching television and I have them in and I think I've got about 85% understanding. I, you know, I can hear but for yeah. some reason, I don't know whether it's uh, the octave le level or whatever of my wife's voice. I just don't. <laughs> Is there so, anything uh, like that? So um, what, would, what would be the best solution for that is to get in um, and, and find out what your loss is, what your hearing aids are doing, um, find Pro or fine tuning and programming is probably something. How old is your hearing aids? Uh, probably about three years. They have retuned them a couple times. Okay. And, and upgraded them because prior to that, before I went in, I guess about oh less than a year ago, it, it, they weren't doing what they had been doing. Okay. Gotcha. And then of course they indicated that. Um, the one year, I think it was the last year, had got a little, gotten a little worse. Okay, and of course, everybody's pushing. You can have this great new one. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get the second one at half price or whatever. <laughs> but I'm looking at as long as this, you know, I can understand things, and and I'm I'm using them more now. I started using them particularly at mass, so I could hear what what was being said because prior to that, I would just stand there and sort of lip sync the, the, the songs. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so overall, okay, so what you're telling me is that 
you're having problems understanding the missus. And due to the fact that you're not able to understand her voice. So you also saying at the same time that you're only wearing your hearing aids intermittently, basically. So that's the first thing. You're giving your brain an intermittent signal. Your brain is going to lose your ability to understand speech doing that. It's a muscle. Your auditory nerve, you need to think of that as a muscle. If you don't use it, you will lose it. So the more you don't wear your hearing aids, the less you're going to hear your wife. Okay. Because she is into that range of the ability to understand and process that, that clarity range. It's, women's voices are in a high frequency. Um, and that's where all that clarity is. So women's voices is into that clarity men's voices like mine, lots of bass and volume in my voice. This is going to give you more volume to where you can understand me rather than somebody with a squeaky voice that is all clarity and a high pitched voice. So bassy like mine, hers has got to be more of a high, high pitched. And do you have a high frequency hearing loss? Most likely, um, was you exposed to loud noises? Was your loss due to that, Herbert? I'm, I'm not aware. I'm not sure. Okay. 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 So basically that's it. You're wearing, you're mm -hmm. wearing your hearing aids to hear better, but you're wearing them part-time. Um, do you wear your glasses part-time? Uh, no. <laughs> correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Enough so, said. <laughs> So like I tell everybody, um, if you, if, especially if you wear glasses, I tell everybody, you can't put your glasses on until you put your hearing aids on. That pretty much gets people to wear their hearing aids every day. So they go hand in hand. They're a sense. You got to keep that sense stimulated. If we don't, you lose it. You will lose it. So you, you lose that ability to process. So that's, that's the thing too. So that is, um, it's basically counseling. Like I said, that's what I'm, that's what I'm uh, most proud of myself, what I do. It's all about counseling. So all you have to do is be counseled correctly. You, in visual clues and things like that, there is so much other than hearing aids that can help you. So, um, yes. So basically just wear your hearing aids more, get used to in a routine, um, into the morning time, get them in your routine every day to where that's what happens every day. Um, and you will find yourself enjoying conversations um, and wear them, get used to them, and then go back in for a fine tuning after you've wore them for about three months, get back in and get back in for that fine tuning. Um, it, because that's what it's all about, um, getting in there, letting them know what's going on with your ears, dear. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Collette? You know, this is very interesting because I had no idea about losing your capacity and your, I, this is the first time I've ever heard Nobody this. So it, I, think, I think thing. if more people knew this, we wouldn't just think, oh, I'm just losing my hearing and it's just part of aging. Yes, uh, I have yes. a question. I had two instances where somebody told me this. One was a lady had a store and all the young people would sit out in front of her store. And what she did is she found some uh, thing that only the young people could hear it. Made them annoyed and they would get out. You know, they wouldn't sit there anymore. And the older people, we didn't hear it. We didn't know what she was even talking about. And another thing a lady told me, she was a teacher. The same thing happened to her. The high schoolers would be listening to something. She had no clue what they were listening to. She didn't hear it, but they could hear it. Is that some, some, a similar type of thing that you were talking about? No, no, not at no? all. So what causes, so what was the cause of that? Do younger people hear uh, a more of a, the frequencies than we do? Well, it depends on, do we have a hearing loss? That's the question. Um, so I don't know what that is. I have no idea what, what that would be. 
-hmm. no idea on that one. So now the the way to come in is to take the test because I don't know if I have a urine loss. Yeah. I mean, sometimes so, I might not catch some something that somebody says, but I don't know if that's a hearing loss or I just didn't catch what they said at the moment because I wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. So having the test might be the best way to find out. Yes, right? yes. I mean, that I, eliminates it and it lets you know where you stand in your hearing. Um, so it kind so, of gives you a baseline. That's right. That's right. And, and that's what you need to... Um, everybody needs to start with a hearing test. Everybody needs to know where they're at at baseline. Um, I have people that walked into my uh, practice, literally 96 years old, did not have one bit of hearing loss, but her whole family was mm. telling her she did, but she didn't. She actually mm. did not have a hearing loss. So it's more of, um, there's times when it's just paying attention. You know, it, it just yeah. because you, or a family member thinks that you have a hearing loss, it could be, it, you don't necessarily have a hearing loss. And that's what's important is to find it out though, that, you know, um, learning and finding out about a hearing loss is gonna prevent any of that ability, your processing to leave you over time. Do you feel that people sometimes, they may have a hearing loss, but they don't wanna wear the hearing aid because they're vain and they don't want oh, people to know Absolutely. that. Yeah. Yeah. Elaine, Elaine, Miss Connor. Miss Connor, you got to unmute, unmute Elaine. Unmute Elaine. <laughs> I think she said she's trying. She's trying. I think I that's what it. she said. You got Yay. it. <laughs> I know how to unmute. I just couldn't, it just wasn't working. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to ask you, what age would you advise people to get their baseline hearing test? You know how people says you can, you should get your mammogram at a certain age and you should do all these different tests at a certain age. What well, age not, would you recommend for the hearing test? Well, if you're not having any problems, I'm going to say around 50, 55. I see. Yeah. So we all are past, <laughs> way past having to have it. <laughs> or I certainly am. <laughs> yeah. It's really, if, you, if you detect a little bit of hearing loss, do you recommend hearing aids? Because somebody just told me something recently yeah. about how if you have a little bit of hearing loss, you need to immediately get them and start wearing them. No, no. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. There is a limit. So the standard says, um, so our chart goes from zero to 120. That's our, that's our in between our, our range of hearing. So zero is supposed to be normal hearing. I do not fit anybody with hearing aids unless they are three marks below 25 decibels. You don't need to wear a hearing aid if you're in between zero and 25. It's too mild of a hearing loss to start wearing hearing aids. It's not something that I would recommend at all, at all. So um, 25 decibels you need to, in, in my world, you need to be three points. So three little marks three of these little axes or these little marks be, um, below uh, 25 decibels. So your decibels comes across this range. So um, like it would be right around here and above that I would not put a hearing aid on you. So you would have to be three marks below that 25 mark, at least three marks below that in order to benefit from a hearing aid. Um, you know, hearing aids aren't cheap and they, I mean, you're not ready to wear one at that point. Um, I think it's way too premature to wear a hearing aid at that point. So what, what would you recommend if you, if you do have, if you do go at 50, how often do you go back to have a recheck? Every, every other year. Okay. About every other year. Yeah. And do you, does insurance cover this or and do you have to go to a, a hearing specialist like yourself or is there any other way to get it you can get it through an um an audiologist an ear nose and throat um 
uh, hearing specialist. I do hearing tests. Um, so there's, um, if you're feeling like you have a hearing loss, depends on your insurance, your insurance will pay for them. Um, I do believe Medicare pays for one hearing test a year. I see. I believe Medicare does. Um, so usually your supplement insurance will pick up anything that your Medicare does not pick up I when see. it comes to that. Um, I do not personally charge for hearing tests. That's all counseling. So we got to know what you're looking at in order to be counseled. So that's part of uh, what I do. It's all about finding out and early detection is a very important thing when it comes to the hearing, especially when you are getting ready to lose that ability to process. Um, I wanted to hit a little bit about what's getting ready to hit the market. So we are into this um, world that um, FDA about three or four years ago had started up this, this uh, plan to put hearing aids over the counter. So we have these things that are coming out. They're called OTCs. They're over-the-counter hearing aids, okay? Um, over-the-counter hearing aids. If you buy anything offline, if you buy anything from TV, if you buy anything without having a hearing test, you do not have a hearing aid. Always remember that. No hearing test. If you're buying something and you never had a hearing test to buy that, it's not a hearing aid. It cannot have your prescription built inside of it. You have to have a hearing test. Now, there are a few people that with over-the-counter OTCs is what they're calling them, over-the-counter hearing aids that will help people. So the question is, what, will it help me or not? So an over-the-counter hearing aid would be a less expensive way to go. Um, it's not going to give you help in background noise. It will not separate that sound. But overall, would it help you? So that is the question. That is for somebody that has first started wearing hearing aids. I will let you know that, the over-the-counter. The over-the-counter can only go up to a 40 to 45 decibel hearing. Because if we pushed anything more than that, it would damage your ears. And, it's, and we can't do that either. So um, there is, there is going to be people that are going to fit into these hearing aids. But I do want everybody to know that if you do buy something, it is not FDA labeled these hearing aids, which means we're not going to be, we're not going to be seeing amplifiers on the markets anymore. Right. So amplifiers used to cost 20 to 30, 40 dollars. Now our hearing aids um, are going to and once again, the label is hearing aids. It's an over the counter. It's not a it's not a digital hearing aid. They can have digital microphones, but they're not digital hearing aids. Um, it's a very gray area into the world. Um, it's something that's just coming in. Um, but there are, like I said, once again, there are people that I can help and it's, it would save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it that way. Um, but it, like I said, it's one of those areas, early um, aging, somebody that's in the aging um, would fit into something like that or somebody that has a hereditary loss, somebody that has a flat loss across the board. If you have any type of a slope in your hearing, you're not going to fit in it. It is um, because you got to think of it as an over-the-counter. So whatever comes in goes out. There is no calculation on what your hearing aid or what your hearing loss is. So whatever that, that sound amplifier hears, it's going to process it and push it through the speaker. So always know that over-the-counter is... Um, it's a hearing aid that they are calling a hearing aid, but um, it is not a prescriptive hearing aid. So if you're, this will not help you maintain your ability to understand and process speech also. That's a big thing to know. I would love to hear some more questions if anybody has any questions. Can you, can you just explain to me what would be considered background noise? 
like you said, you won't be able to hear background noise. Okay. So background noise is any sound. So it can be, we can be um, sitting here talking and there can be water running into the background. There can be kids playing in the background. So anytime that, um, anytime you have background noise, it's going to be very, very hard to hear through that. Um, hearing aids have your prescription inside of it. So it knows what your hearing loss is and can help into those situations automatically where something that is not automatic, that is, it is, um, a beefed up amplifier, um, is not going to be able to separate that sound because it does not literally know what you can and what you cannot hear. So that's so what the hearing. So in other words, I could hear you talking, but I couldn't hear the water running. Is that what you're saying? Or the no, the water running saying? would be overpowering me. So your background noise, anytime it comes to speech, being able to understand speech, if there's a lot of background noise, it's always challenging for somebody oh, to hear okay. to that situation. Okay. So okay. the background noise in that type of a hearing aid would um, overshadow the, the, the rest of the sounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. I had it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, really that's, is that's, there? that's what it's about questions. You know, you need to, you know, and that's what I, it's, it's about understanding what's going on. So yeah, I was thinking that it was in the background. So you would hear what was up front, but not the background. No. I had it so the we hear 360 yeah. all the way around us. So we have that. Um, uh, we have that ability to um, hear all the way around us. That's why another thing too, is that I tell a lot of people, everybody is another question is, well, can I wear just one hearing aid? And uh, my best answer for that is God was such a great creator. If he wanted us to have one ear, he would have put it right here. <laughs> so with that being said, we can't take away background noise or no, but nothing can take away background noise, but we can diminish that to where we can um, enhance that speech into those situations. Um, so that's, that's a big thing. And on something else that I wanted to let you know, um, that is very important. And Virginia state law is you have the right to return a hearing aid within 30 days and you do not have to give an explanation besides I just don't want to wear them. There is, it's a state law. So a lot of people don't realize that you can give those hearing aids back if you're not happy with them. And it's very important to know that. Um, also, um, there's a lot of different manufacturers out here. There's Beltone, there's Miracle Ear, there's Siemens, there's Rexton, there's, um, um, Lidex, Unitron, there's a major, major amount of manufacturers for hearing aids out here. One is not better than the other. Okay. So a lot of people drive themselves crazy on figuring out where they want to buy their hearing aids, what they want to buy. I carry seven different brands. If you go to any place, you won't see anybody carrying no more than two or three brands. If somebody comes to me and they've done major research and this is what they want, I give them what they want. That's the reason why I carry so many manufacturers. But please know that a hearing aid will only sound as good as the hearing aid is programmed. So you can have a hearing loss, you can have a hearing aid. If it's not programmed properly, it will not sound good to you. So there's a lot of things when it comes to that. Um, and like I said, questions is something that I'd love to hear some more of. Kimberly, can you put somewhere on um, the notes here how we can contact you and, and where you're located? Yes, I can. Absolutely. I just found the chat. <laughs> Kimberly, I bought a hearing aid a couple of weeks ago, which uh -huh. I will get next week. And okay. uh, from what you said, it sounds like if after, if within 30 days of having it, 
if I decide it's not doing me any good, I can return it without any shelving fee? It depends on the person you go to, whether or not they charge shelving fees. So um, a lot of people, a, a lot of practices do charge um, restocking fees or that type of thing. Um, and I have no idea what that price looks like. Um, so that would be something. Um, and I will tell everybody going forward, that's a part of negotiation. Okay. Don't, you don't need to pay for restocking fees. They, you know, ask that to be taken off your contract. Um, that doesn't need to be, if you're not happy with a product, why should you be paying anything for a product? Um, you were here to help you hear better. Um, I, there is no, um, there is no stocking fees uh, when it comes to my practice. I do not, there's no nickel and diamond. It is, and I'm not here to sell myself, but there's a, this is the reason why I opened my practice five years ago is just them, them type of statements. Um, I've been doing it a long time and my hands has been tied for a long time. I haven't, nobody goes out into the communities and talks to people. That's the main thing is communication. The main thing onto this into this platform is for us to be able to help you make the best decision you can make for yourself and for your loved ones. Because it's not just you that is benefiting from these hearing aids. It's everybody around you is benefiting. So that is everything that should be played off of what you need, um, what you're looking for out of a hearing aid. Um, but that might be something you know, and, and please give that a good shot. Are you getting one or two? Sandra. I'm getting two, one for each year. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm getting them from Costco. Okay. That's, that's awesome. I don't believe mm -hmm. that they have stocking fees. If, if I'm, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. I don't believe they mm -hmm. have them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. They're a good company. They're a very well known. Um, you know, they have a lot of people that come in and out of there. So um, I know a lot of people that work into them environments. And that's, they, they do good for their people. I, I, I like Costco. And really, does it take some getting used to when you it first does. have? It does. So just like you've lost over time, it needs to come back over time. It's not, it's, so hearing is never a quick fix. So when we lose hearing, we lose it over time. When you first get a hearing aid, um, so let's say for instance, that you're coming in for the first time and you're getting your hearing aid. So if this is your hearing loss, this is your hearing aid, and we're gonna get you closer to what your hearing loss is when you first, first get your hearing aid. So as you're wearing your hearing aid, um, Everything will sound good. You're going to think that you're hearing, like I said before, 100%. You're going to think that. As time goes on, like every, I set my appointments for my patients to come back every six months. So every six months, we have a little jumping that we do to try to get you up closer to what your hearing loss is. So not even in three years, sometimes can people even get up to their full um, expectation of that hearing loss. Because if things, if their brain isn't able to come, isn't able to handle the sound, we step you very slowly back up into where you need to be. You will feel, and the, the difference that you will feel is probably about six to eight months after you get your hearing aids, you'll just have this thought that, hmm, I'm just not hearing the way I've been hearing. And that's when you need to get in to see your, your hearing specialist you need to get them fine tuned up a little bit for you. So it's something that happens. It's not like glasses. I put my glasses on and I wear them for three to four years. Hearing aids, you wear them for three to four years, but you have to come in for them fine tunings. Today's hearing aids also is very important for them fine tunings because when you go in, we do not know that you have updates in your hearing aids until you physically come in 
and I hook your hearing aids up. And that's when I can see whether or not there's a there's an update for your hearing aids. So hearing aids today compared to five years ago have updates to, to them because of the software that we have now. So everything is um, high end, everything is technical and everything just like your anything else, like your cell phones, they need um, updates done to them. They are just a better quality of sound. They hook to your your phone. So your technology changes. And we just um, get you to hear better with what you have. Very good. But um, so uh, what else did I want to talk to you about? Questions. So it, it, seriously, if you are um, seeing somebody with your hearing question, you know, if you have questions, please ask, ask those questions. So you have uh, some places will give you a, um, by law, it's a 30 day. Some places will give you a 45 day. Some places will give you 60. So it really depends on where you're going to where, what type of a um, trial period you have. Um, if something is not right in your trial period, your trial period is the time frame that you have for any reason to return your hearing aids. So if you are not happy, find out what's going on. Can they fix it? Is there something that's happening? You need to be able to wear your hearing aids every day. They need to sound good to you. They need never to be too loud. Um, I always recommend having a volume control on a hearing aid. You can control the sound that you hear because of when you get into certain situations, you might wanna turn it down or turn it up, depending on who's talking. We don't talk alike. So there is a lot of people with different tones of voices that you might need to have that volume control. Um, programs, hearing aids today, usually if you're, you're into a good hearing aid, you don't need programs. The hearing aids will automatically, like the hearing aids today, they will adjust into the, the three top line of hearing aids will adjust automatically um, the lower one is five different areas, six different areas, and the top of the line is seven different areas. So whether you're in a small group, a large group, in quiet, in noise, um, it doesn't matter watching TV, the hearing aid automatically changes within every single one of those different environments automatically. So that when you're into that situation, if you feel like you need to turn that up, you can turn that up or down. So that's how hearing aids get programmed and fine-tuned. So we give you all of those to, to be out into the world with. When you come back and fine-tuning and you say to me, well, when I was into this situation, I was into the restaurant, I could hear everything at that table next to me, but I couldn't hear any conversation right at my table. So that is actually a thing. And it all... That's the type of things that we need to know to actually help you hear better into those situations. And into the one, one little um, program, like I said, there's seven different programs in that one that is an automatic program that I go in just in your restaurant settings and change what's going on in that setting and not change anything else in the hearing aid. So it's a fine tuning instrument that is fine tuned to you within a matter of about 45 days, everything is fine tuned and set for you to go to be seen again in another six to eight months. Um, so when you have problems into those situations, it's important to let them know that that's what's going on in that situation. So things can be programmed and fine tuned to you. Well, I think I've talked a lot longer than I expected to talk. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been very informative. Well, thank you. Thank you. It really it. has been. I learned a lot. But yes. we do. We need to know how to get in touch with you if yes. we have questions or if we want an ear, a hearing test, or and my hearing. my hearing tests and counseling is free of charge. So okay. that's something I do for everybody. Um, if you know veterans, if you know people that get their hearing aids from the VA and they don't pay for their hearing aids, 
nine times out of 10, these people go in to get hearing aids and then they have to wait like six to eight months to get a checkup. I want to take care of them people. They don't need to be waiting you no know, six to eight months for a checkup. It take, it'll take me five to 10 minutes to take care of them. So if you know of anybody that's like that, please send them my way um, because it's so hard for them to get into the VA. And that's something I do pro bono. So I take care of any VA patients that get their hearing aids from the VA at no charge. That's something that Excellent. I do. That's so nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for taking your time to come to us today. Oh, yeah. no problem. I, yeah, I learned a lot. I'm gonna get my too. hair injected. I'm gonna get and drag my husband with me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It is so nice when I have couples that come in and do that, and they do it together. You know, it is so nice. That is so awesome. Yes, I bet. And then they sit in there and they're like, "I told you, you couldn't hear." <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and I'll give you one more bout of information. I do have a web page, um, and that tells all about me um, and my patients that are with me currently. And yes. And again, like I said, thank you again, um, Cynthia, for having me. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy that Joan was our liaison to get you here. Yes. You answered a lot of things that I had never even heard of before, like Colette. So, yes. And that's the biggest. And like I said, that is the biggest thing is getting the information out. Nobody shares information and I have no idea why. Um, but it's something that you have to make. A, this is a big decision and you have to be able to make a sound decision and you have to have everything on your plate in order to do that. So that is awesome. I want to send my, my website. So, okay, awesome. Thank you again, everybody. And All right, Kimberly, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.